So now imagine that this is your setup like before. We know that to connect these two, we're gonna be doing a channel. So QMA to B, we'll be using an MCA channel. And again, to get from the client into the Q manager, that will also be using a channel. That's the second type of channel. And those are the MQI channels. Now, those are the two we've talked about before. Now, the interesting thing here is that this is a client and this is a server in the MQI world. Now, what does that mean? Well, what I mean here is we're, we're talking here now about channels and we've already mentioned them, but now we're going to go in a little bit more detail. When this occurs here, this MCA channel happens, on the left side, you are, if assuming that the direction of this communication is from A to B, like that, then you have what's called a, you, you create on Q Manager A, a sender channel. And not a server channel, a sender channel. And then on the B side, you create a receiver channel. And this is not the same thing as the world here of server and client, because as we've seen before, here you're going to have a server con, which really just says where on earth is the server in this in this scenario, where is the server? And then you separately, you can, it's sort of optional, but actually it's always here anyway. It's called a client con. And these two go together. So again, this is the client, this is the server. You see the server con, you see the client con. And where is it exactly that you see these things? Let's look. So if you go into the MQ Explorer and you go to channels, you will see them, right? Here is, remember we talked about this earlier. When you have two queue managers, one on the left, one on the right, on the left, you're going to set up a sender channel. And on the right, the other, you know, the right uh, queue manager, you would set up a receiver channel. And remember, we had said before that the sender channel name, the channel name up here must match the receiver channel. Now, what you're seeing in the channels here is the server connection. So that's not the same thing, right? That is not a sender channel. Sender channels are for MCA the sender and the receiver, whereas a, a server connection is the, con the channel that will receive connections from a client. So in the MQI world, like we've been saying. Anyway, here they are. You can see channel type server connection. That's one of them. And here's another one, CFQM SSL server con. So you can almost ignore really what the name of these channels are because remember they're just arbitrary object names. The important thing is that they're channel types. Now, notice that underneath the channel, you, you might be saying, okay, well, there's a server connection. Where's my client connection? And there is something here called a client connection, but we're going to come back to that in a second because that's really not where we want to look yet. The server connection, there must be a client connection that comes in to the server connection, and they both have to use this particular name. The name is absolutely critical. And take a look at this from the MQ Primer. The simplest way to define the client connection channel, the CLNT con, is to set the MQ server environment variable. And you might think that that's really weird. Why is the client the server? But actually, this is sort of an implicit connection over to the server. The whole thing, you can think of the whole thing, forget its components for a second, the whole thing is the client connection. It's the client con. And this chan1, as it says down here, is the name of the channel to be used for communication between the client and the server. There must be a corresponding server con channel of this name, same name, that is defined in the server. Okay, well, so now you might be thinking, well, the, okay, I'll just go in here and I'm going to find what am I going to find? When you click on client connections, this is something different. Yes, it says client connection, but actually this is an entry in a table. This is telling you what the clients are. It's not telling you, it's not telling the server how to connect to the client. That is something that a, that a client would do to the server. This is telling you who your clients are by looking into a special table. And you can see this if you go to the Secure Messaging Scenarios PDF on page 195. You'll see here that if you go to this direct, this location, this path, var MQM Q Managers, the name of your Q Manager, and then you go to this IPCC, which is, stands for IP address, and it's the client connection. This is, you'll find a file in here called AMQCL 
chl and you can dot tab tab and you can kind of get an idea just by reading this it's the advanced message queue client cl channel table so it's just a table it's just and in fact we're going to look at it it's just a table telling you who all your clients are and this is just a note of what we just said the server does not use the client connections to connect or contact the client the way the client does the server the client connections in MQ Explorer is just a listing of who the clients are and it's this is the table that we're about to look at so here I just did a read link dash F which will tell you what the full path of the file is here and sure enough there's our file and let's take a look at its contents I'm going to do a vim you can tell that this is actually a binary file but you can also see some of the critical components that we're talking about and sure enough there's the server con right but this time it's SSL and you, you know you can kind of get an idea just by just by looking at the contents here and so you might be wondering why on earth would you do that that sounds so complicated create a dot tab file and then get it populated it's just very cumbersome but actually what you'll find is that using that approach of just doing a single environment variable limits you there are things you just can't do by using what what we have seen with the with the uh, client con and here is a page on the MQ primer that explains this. There are many ways to define client configurations, and we'll look at that in a second. But one of the things that you just can't do the way we've been doing it is working with SSL and TLS definitions, which are really important, obviously. So it says these additional attributes cannot be set by using the environment variables and are usually set by creating a what's called a client channel definition table, CCDT, which is a file that's created by defining a client con channel in a queue manager and those things are actually compiled and you copy them over to the client machine and then you get you expose all these other really interesting things that you can do so for example if you don't want to overload a given queue you can do load balancing but you can't do it the way we've been doing it you instead have to use these ccdt and potentially those dot tab files and then just a quick note here the ccdt has actually been uh, somewhat deprecated in the latest version of MQ. Newer versions of, M of MQ expose the CCDT fields in the MQ Con X API, and we had talked about this a little bit earlier. And you don't necessarily need it on new applications, but of course, if you're using old ones, you of course would. Now, again, we said here that there are many ways to configure client configurations, and let's take a look at that. We've only looked actually so far at one of them, and so now let's take a look at the others. So we originally, of course, did our client con by saying where our server con was actually located, right? And that's the first way. So that's probably the easiest way to do it. Uh, and then, of course, you would also need a server con channel definition on your server, having the same name as the client con on your client. This server con allows the queue manager to create the server side of the client server communication. And then for maximum control over your client con channel, definition you generate your own mqcd in your client program and pass this in with the mqcn and there's some other things that we're not going to cover right now but you get the idea right if you if you want to do something more complicated you need to do something more complicated so essentially there are the we there's one of actually it says two here but actually there are three so that is this mq server we did that one now MQ method two was making use of the ccdt which we had talked about and uh, again it made it's made available to the mq client and it requires different environment variables at the client this method allows the mq client software to attempt to connect through the server con channel through zero one or more client con channels def uh, defined in the ccdt and of course that's documented now but actually this is the third method you could potentially do which is the structure on the mq con x which we also just looked at and just to give you uh, some details here, so again, we looked at this, the set MQ server, blah, blah, blah. That is client con. That's your CLNT con. Uh, now, this, if you're going to do, if you want to fill in that table we've been talking about, this is one way you could do it. So you set up your client con. You define it here. Of course, this is a run MQSC command, right, that we've been looking at. So you would just plug essentially something like this in, and that will make the entry in that table and then here are all those great options that you can add that we haven't talked about that you know that you would need in the more advanced scenario so this is this is really interesting it tells you essentially how to do it but when you are in the client program once you've got this table set up you can then set up two environment variables mqch lib and then the mqch tab those become environment variables and now your client programs get all of those features that you enabled with this